Welcome everyone to the webinar. We're going to be covering speed reading techniques in today's session. My name is Paul Novak. I'm the founder and CEO here at Iris Reading. Thanks for joining us today for our live stream. So we're going to get right into it, but I want you to be aware of a few things, uh, kind of housekeeping items, uh, what you'll need for the workshop. We've got some materials here and you can find all the materials at irisreading.com slash YTS. And that link is actually in the description of that video, but if for some reason you can't track it down, just type this into your browser, irisreading.com slash YTS. That will forward you over to a Dropbox folder, and that's where you can find the PDFs for today's session. Don't start reading them yet. You don't have to print them out. They're only a, a handful of pages, uh, but we'll, I'll have them displayed on my screen too. So if you're joining us on YouTube, let's say you're on a desktop, you might want to maximize the window so when we do get to those slides, you could read directly from your screen, or even better, make sure you download them here. And that way you can easily zoom in to those materials. Uh, even better if you could print them out, great, but you don't have to print them out. Just want you to be aware of that. Uh, by the way, the way I got involved teaching speed reading, because we've done these workshops all over the place. Uh, we're based in Chicago. I'm broadcasting from Miami right now. And we are, we've done the workshops at the corporate level, the university level, even for high school students. We always hear it over and over again. I wish I learned this earlier. And actually, I learned these kind of skills when I was a freshman in college. I wish I learned them in high school. I definitely would have done better on tests like the, you know, the ACT, those reading tests that we have to take, the SATs. And basically, when I got to college, even though I was a good student in high school, I couldn't keep up. I was uh, working a part-time job. I had five classes my first semester. I was also on the basketball team. So keeping up with all that material was hard. And I remember falling behind in my grades kind of slipping. And I had this instructor that I was meeting with during his office hours, I was trying to get some help in his class. And I was kind of telling him like, this is almost impossible to just manage and keep up with all this reading. And this particular professor told me that I should consider taking a speed reading course. And he told me he took one when he was in college and suggested I do the same. And I started searching around for a speed reading course in Chicago at the time, and I couldn't find any. I found some software on speed reading. I found some, uh, I also found some books on speed reading, but I wanted to take an actual class. So my professor apparently had taken a speed reading course years back. So I asked him, hey, can you teach me what you know about this? And he's like, all right, come in during office hours. We'll work on it. And I'd come in on like Tuesdays and Thursdays for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour at a time. And uh, my first day, he measures my reading speed. I was at 190 words a minute. And I was informed that that was average, which it is. I was really, really happy to know that I was average. And just because for years, I thought I was a slow reader. Uh, I was ran out of time on those tests. English is not my first language. It's Polish. Both of my parents are immigrants from Poland. I was born and raised in Chicago, but I grew up speaking only Polish. So I remember struggling with reading during my you know, first few years of school. And so I was kind of happy to know that I was average. And my professor told me, do not be happy with average. You got to be above average, especially if you go to grad school. That's where your reading, the amount of reading you get goes to a whole different level. Anyway, so he gives me a standardized reading test. Don't worry, we're not going to do one of those today. We don't have time for it. Uh, but in this hour, we're going to try to cover a lot of ground. But I remember on that test, I ran out of time. I got a 60%, didn't do so well. So that was my starting point, 190 and 60% of the test. We went through about 10 hours of training, not in a single day, but over a few weeks. And I started making progress in my speed. Just to give you an idea of that progress, I remember starting at 190, my last session, 830. So more than four times faster. As far as comprehension goes, second time on a standardized test, instead of a 60, I got an 83 because I was able to actually finish the test. And I, I mean, I hate sounding cliche and calling this a life-changing experience, but if you're reading four times faster, that changes the game for you as a student. Uh, college was still hard. I actually was uh, was majoring in finance. And uh, during my sophomore year, I actually started working a full-time job. And I was going to school full-time while working full-time. And there's no way I would have been able to juggle work and school 40 hours a week and a full-time schedule of school if I was still reading at that average pace. And the way I started teaching speed reading was almost by accident because I was working at the time and I continued to work for many years in the trading world, dealing with stocks, bonds, commodities, things like that. But during my senior year, final semester, I took an entrepreneurship class. 
And in that class, our professor wanted us to you know, come up with a business idea, write a business plan. And I remember seeing a lot of my fellow classmates struggling to keep up, just like I was used to struggle to keep up with my reading. So I figured I'd start a little speed reading tutoring service. And this is how uh, Iris Reading got started as an organization. Since then, we've grown a lot. Um, again, we've got our main offices in Chicago. We also have offices in Miami, but we've done this in over 100 cities worldwide. We've got instructors in Hong Kong, Singapore, London, and all the major cities in the US. Uh, so you're in good company. We've done this for employees at NASA, the Army, the Navy, uh, Google, LinkedIn, and a lot of different universities. So like I said, we're going to be covering various techniques. Make sure you have uh, the materials for today, irisreading.com slash YTS. That's where you could find them. The link is in the description, but you know what? I'll put the link also in the chat area here, irisreading.com slash YTS. Also, uh, one of my colleagues, Cynthia, is in the chat as well to handle any questions you might have as they come in. So feel free to post anything you want there. I'll be keeping an eye on it as well, but we're gonna get right into it. So uh, one last reminder, subscribe to us here on YouTube and we're going to be coming out with weekly videos related to uh, not just uh, being more efficient readers, but also productivity related topics, note taking. We do all sorts of content related to becoming a better student. So what we're gonna cover today is first, we'll measure your reading speed. You know, some people know their typing speed, not everyone knows their reading speed, so let's figure that out. We'll also cover how to improve your focus while reading. And this is something where we all have to deal with distractions, right? From our phone to other types of distractions. Actually, sometimes we just have random distractions. Do you ever, you ever have the situation you're reading a page and you read the whole page and you're like, I have absolutely no clue what I read because I was thinking about totally different things. And sometimes our mind wanders off while we're reading. So we'll talk about improving your focus and also how to improve comprehension. Sometimes speed is not the problem and sometimes it's more of a comprehension. Uh, we want these things balanced out, right? Uh, we don't wanna go so fast that we can't understand. Also, some people, go, or some people are going too slow. Actually, if you go too slow, you can ruin your comprehension. We'll talk about improving speed and comprehension, but also how to read faster on the computer screen. I don't know about you, but I do the majority, the vast majority of my reading on screens, whether it's my laptop, uh, my phone, I've also got a tablet, a Kindle, and of course I'm sometimes reading traditional paper-based books, but I think maybe 80% or 90% of my reading is off of the screen. And the average person reads a bit slower on the screen than they do on the page for reasons that you might already Imagine there's more distractions on the screen, the glare of the screen, all these things play a part. But we'll get into that, reading faster on the screen, and also how to build up your speed with practice. There are things you can do and exercises that you can practice to improve your reading speed. We'll also talk about how to go about reading complex information, because it's one thing to read a short article or a news article or a blog post. It's a whole different thing when you're dealing with a I don't know, advanced level physics textbook. So our focus is really, it has to be in three areas. Speed, we wanna read faster, but with comprehension, of course, because your speed is irrelevant unless you're comprehending. And we want retention as well. Retention is what do you remember later on? So think of these two as, you know, they're related, but there's a subtle difference. Comprehension, think of that as, okay, this is the comprehension I'm getting as I'm actually reading the book. Retention is what do you remember later on? It could be an hour later, a day later, a year later. Sometimes your comprehension might be pretty good at the moment, but then your retention is terrible. We might forget a lot of it later on. So we wanna work on all three of these areas. That's our goal as an organization. And as students or even professionals, if we wanna be efficient readers, we need all three of these areas to be solid. Here is how most people tend to read. See this green dot bouncing around on the page? Most people, when they read, they go, of course, word by word, like this. Sometimes we go back, like, hold on, come again. And we're basically reading in this manner. And there's a few old reading habits that we gotta change if we're gonna start reading faster and more efficiently. So, and actually, think of this. When was the last time you learned how to read? I mean, for most people, the last time they learned how to read was, maybe the first time they learned how to read. And that's actually kind of weird if you think about it. 
If I asked you, when was the last time you learned history, you wouldn't say, oh, when I was in kindergarten or first grade. No, I mean, history you learned year by year, right? If I said, when was the last time you learned math? I mean, mathematics, you learn over your academic career, right? The knowledge accumulates. Same thing with the sciences, but reading, which kind of underpins many of the other areas, reading is taught, generally speaking, I'm not saying for everyone, but most people are taught to read one time in their life, around the age of four or five, six years old. And then it's up to you to figure out when you get to high school or college, how do you uh, read through advanced technical textbooks? How do I read a novel? How should I be reading the news? How should I be reading maybe a material that is uh, poetically written, something that something that requires reflection like philosophy? Uh, or how do we memorize it? We're not gonna get into it today, but if you go to our website, irisreading.com, you can find courses that will help you to memorize information. A lot of times the students were taught, you know, mem memorize this for the test, memorize that. It's very rare that people are taught, here's how you memorize, and there are techniques for that. So there are basically some old reading habits that kind of set in over time if we don't kind of upgrade our study skills. And one of those older reading habits is something called fixation. So fixation is something your eyes do when uh, you're reading. They fixate on one word and the next word and the next word. Now, these fixations happen really fast. It's like the split of a second, and then you're off to the next word. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because as you gain some fluency in English or any language, eventually you can start reading groups of words. And that can make you more efficient. That can make you faster. And actually, you already probably read groups of words when you're in a car, when you're driving. Let's say you were taking a, a road trip towards New York City and you spot out of the corner of your eye a sign, an exit sign on the highway says New York City. Three words, New York City. You wouldn't be fixated on the road and fixate on each individual word, right? You would just fixate on the sign and grab those three words in one single fixation, and then you fixate back on the road so you don't crash, right? Happens instantly. So the problem is, if the words New York City were buried in the middle of some paragraph, most people, what they would do is they would fixate on New York City one by one, and that's part of, part of the issue here. So we gotta adapt this to the page or the screen. We'll talk about reading groups of words in a little bit. There's another old reading habit, which has to do with going back. The fancy word for it is regression, but we've all done this, right? Sometimes, you know, you read a paragraph and you're like, I have no clue what I read. I got to read it again and again. Sometimes you got to read the stupid paragraph like 10 times. Now, you ever, if you've ever read a sentence over and over again, here's one thing to be aware of. First off, I would argue that you should never, you should never ever read one sentence more than once. And here's why, let me explain. If I, if I read a sentence and it didn't make sense, yeah, maybe it went over my head, maybe I wasn't paying attention, but maybe it's also possible, keep in mind, maybe this sentence doesn't make sense until I read the next sentence or the rest of the paragraph. That actually happens very often when you're reading. You don't always get all the information at once. Sometimes the author is leading you down a path to getting a main point or a, su a summary of that information later. Uh, it's kind of, so what I'm suggesting here, yes, go back when you finish a paragraph. If I read a whole paragraph of text and I don't know what I just read, I should definitely go back and reread, but try to avoid it after a single sentence. It's kind of like, I like to think of it from the standpoint of watching movies. Uh, you know, when you're watching a movie at home and you ever have a movie where it's a little confusing at the beginning, you're not sure what's going on first five minutes of the movie. Do you stop the movie at that point and say, you know what, maybe if I rewatch from the beginning, this will all make more sense? No, I mean, you know how movies are, you just kind of go with the flow, unless you were legitimately distracted. But eventually later on in the movie, the beginning starts to make more sense. And the same thing happens with reading. When you're reading a paragraph, if that first sentence or second or third sentence doesn't, don't go back after a single sentence. Read further, and if you get to the end of the paragraph, and it didn't make sense, then yes, definitely go back. But try to avoid it after a single sentence. Now, the main goal here, we have to improve our focus because a lot of the reason why we go back is because our mind wandered off. Nobody has perfect focus, but there are ways to improve and even train yourself 
to improve your focus. There is a third old reading habit, and this is one of the harder ones to change. You probably remember when you were little, you had to read out loud in front of your teacher or in front of your class. Do you remember this dreadful experience? I do, because I used to hate reading out loud in front of class. Because I told you earlier that English isn't my first language. My first language is Polish. And when I was learning English, I was around the age of five or six. That's when you start learning how to read. So when I was reading out loud, I was messing up on words all the time. So the good news is you don't have to read out loud forever. Eventually, your teacher says, instead of reading out loud, do what? Say the words silently in your head. And they call this subvocalization. Subvocalization is that voice you hear in your head while you're reading. You may have noticed that you hear voices in your head while you're reading. And it doesn't mean you're crazy. It's your voice. Um, by the way, if it's another voice, that's a separate, separate issue. But this habit is very, very common among readers, subvocalization, reading and saying the words to yourself. And this actually places some restrictions on your reading speed. And we're going to talk a little further about this. But first, speaking of your reading speed, let's measure it. So what I'd like you to do, if you haven't already, go to this link, irisreading.com slash YTS. That link is in the comments. Uh, it's also in the description of the video, or you can just type it into your browser, irisreading.com slash YTS. I want you to refer to the first file there labeled speedtest1.pdf. And it looks like this. By the way, if you could read from my screen here, you could just maximize your screen all the way and you could read from my screen. But what we're gonna do here is measure your reading speed. So I'm going to put one minute on the clock here and I want you to go at your normal reading speed. Don't try to go faster than usual. Uh, don't go slower than usual. Read normally. And at the end of the minute, we're gonna figure out what your speed was. You'll notice on this document, there's a whole bunch of numbers on the side that'll help us figure out our speed. Now, like I said before, make sure you're reading normally. We're not racing here. I want you to read for good comprehension to understand it well. I'm not gonna give you a test on what you just read, but I want you to read this like you normally would so you can get an accurate idea of what your actual speed is. Now, while you're reading, I will disable my webcam, so goodbye temporarily. And also I'll disable my mic while you're reading so you don't hear any background noise from my end. But I just want you to read normally. So I got a minute on the clock. Here's the article. Go ahead and begin reading. All right, that was a minute of reading. Go ahead and take a look at the line where you stopped and let's figure out your reading speed. Now, these numbers, just to be clear, they represent the number of words to the end of that line from the very beginning. So if you read from here to here to the word even, that would be 249. If you finished up the paragraph, that extra word, of course, that would be 250. Figure out your speed, write it down, make sure you keep track of this because we're gonna be working on improving it. And we only know if we're making improvements if we're actually measuring. So let's write that number down for yourself. And let's, uh, or for those of you watching this later, if you wanna drop your uh, speed in the uh, comments below, feel free. Uh, you don't have to, I'll leave that up to you, but here's the average. Actually, before I show you the average, I want you to, if you don't mind, in the chat area, well, you can see on my screen here, I've got a link, irisreading.com slash S1. If you go there, it's a little survey, and we like to aggregate this data. We actually have um, data on thousands and thousands of uh, reading speeds of people that have measured it. And I'd like you to add it here if you can. 
you could scan the QR code or you could go to this link. It'll take you to a form that just asks you, what, is, what was your speed? And then you see how it says estimate your comprehension? Here's what we mean by that. We don't have time to do a standardized reading test right now. So I just want you to estimate your comprehension. What I mean by that is think of it like a confidence level on a scale of zero to 100%. While you were reading this article, how'd you feel your comprehension was? So it's very subjective. If you felt like your comprehension was pretty good, you might enter here 80%. Or if you felt like it was so-so, you might say 70%. If you felt like it was kind of bad, maybe you got distracted or whatever, you might put 60 or 50, or maybe you put 73.2% if you want to be so precise. Put a number there and uh, we would appreciate the feedback. Now, the average reading speed is 150 to 250. That is where most people tend to fall. It's a, it's a big range, as you can see, but this kind of represents a bell curve. If you've studied statistics, where about 80% of people fall in that range of 150 to 250, and then we have 20% of people that fall out of that range, either below average or above average. And by the way, this does not take into account um, education level. For college-educated adults, uh, the average is a little bit higher. Average is 200 to 300 for college-educated adults. But you can compare it to this average or this average. Like I said, this is for college-educated adults. And one other thing I want to mention, these averages are basically dependent on medium level material in terms of difficulty. That means material that's not too easy and not too hard. So I think all of us would agree this article right here is not like Dr. Seuss. It's not a children's book, but it's also not a textbook where you would have more technical information. So for material that's kind of middle of the road, these are the numbers for what would broadly be considered medium level material. So things, something to be aware of. Now, what about reading on the screen? Remember I said the average person reads slower on the screen? When people are reading on the screen, uh, they tend to read a little bit slower. It can be a little more frustrating. There was a study done a few years ago where they found it was 32% slower. So that would indicate the average is closer to around maybe 136 words per minute or so. So again, something to be aware of. I wanna circle back to this uh, topic of subvocalization that we mentioned before, which again was the idea of saying words in your head while you're reading. Everybody does this, but here's the issue. If you're saying all the words in your head, doesn't that mean you're going to read as fast as you talk? And there's a bit of a problem there because you can only talk so fast, right? I mean, some people talk faster than others, but there is a limit, even if you're a fast talker. So, Here's the thing, what is the average talking speed? If we took a giant sample of people, like 10,000, and we measured everyone's talking speed, guess what? The average talking speed is this, 150 to 250. Same as the average reading speed. Why are they the same? It's because of this habit. If you're saying all the words, you'll basically read as fast as you talk. Now, this is part of the reason why we wanna change this habit. What's faster, your talking speed or your thinking speed? I think all of us would agree we can think much faster than we talk. Actually, that's why uh, our ta our tagline at Iris Reading is reading at the speed of thought, because you're perfectly capable of reading faster than just your talking speed. But I also want to clarify, because some people get hung up on this habit of subvocalization when they're learning about reading faster. Some people are like, I can't get that voice out of my head, and they start going a little crazy about it. It's not about getting rid of the voice. It's not about eliminating it, it's about reducing it. So for example, when I read, I still say words in my head, but I'm not saying every single word. For example, if I had a sentence like, the boy jumped over the fence in my head, I'm not saying all the words, I might just say, boy jumped fence. Same idea comes across, but I'm not saying every word. Now, you might be thinking, does that imply that you're skipping words? Not exactly, because you wouldn't want to skip words because one little word could totally change the meaning of a sentence. The idea is that I'm still seeing the words, I'm just not saying all the words. I'll give you an example of when you do that. When you're in a car and you're driving and you see a stop sign, do you say stop? Probably not. You see a stop sign and you just it just registers, right? 
but it doesn't mean you skipped the word. You saw the word, you understand what it means, you just didn't bother saying it. So that's what I mean by reducing subvocalization. We gotta change all of these habits and we'll work on it. Uh, but again, the average reading speed, that's where most people tend to fall, about the same as their talking speed. And for those of you that are above this range, if you're an above average reader in terms of speed, that means you're probably not our, you're probably not saying all these words in your head, which is a good thing. We're gonna work on changing these habits. But first, let's talk about how do we improve concentration? Because this is something where we can get a quick win. By that I mean like an immediate improvement without much practice. So the easiest way to get better concentration or focus while you're reading is to use a pacer. Use your hand or pen or your finger as a guide. What I mean by this is, this is more appropriate when you're reading on the page, but you're basically going to be dragging your finger or your hand, or some people prefer to use a pen, and that's fine, just smoothly going across the page. And there's a reason why you want to do this. It's because your eyes are naturally attracted to motion. Anything that moves around naturally gets our attention. For example, uh, imagine if there was a bee flying around in your room right now. It'd be a little distracting, right? One, because it's a bee. And two, because anything that moves around just gets our attention. That's how we're wired as human beings. So we can take advantage of the fact that we get distracted by motion. Well, basically our attention goes to things that move around. So let's take advantage of it and create some motion on the page and our eyes are naturally going to follow. And by the way, there's some science as to why you would wanna do this. It has to do with eye movements. There are two types, saccadic and smooth pursuit. What's the difference between these two eye movements? One of them, this one right here, smooth pursuit, happens when you're moving, when something's moving around. If you're tracking something with your eyes, if there's movement, you move in a smooth pursuit. If there is no movement, for example, I'm in a room right now where nothing's moving around, and let's say I'm just moving my eyes around the room like this, my eyes would move in a saccadic fashion because I'm not following anything, I'm just looking around the room at stationary objects. Let me show you what that looks like close up. Apologies for the creepy zoomed in eyeball here, but this is an example of a saccadic eye movement. You see those little stops? They call those saccades or a saccadic eye movement. That's the way your eyes move when you're just reading like this. If you're not using your hand or pen and you're just reading like this, your eyes have to move that way. No other choice. That's just how we're wired. But if you use your hand or your finger or a pen to guide your eyes while you're reading, then what's gonna happen is your eyes are gonna move like this. See, that's a lot smoother, right? And that's just your eyes reacting to motion. Let me show you them side by side. So here on the left, we have saccadic. Here on the right, we have smooth pursuit. Saccadic, smooth pursuit. You can see the difference side by side. Again, apologies, I know it looks a little weird looking at these zoomed in eyeballs, but you get the idea. The smooth pursuit, that eye movement lends itself to better focus. What I mean by that is you pay more attention to things that move around, so much so that your eyes actually move differently when things are moving around. So that's part of the reason why we want to use a pacer when we're reading. Now, I do understand that that's not always practical when you're reading on the screen, right? When we're reading on the screen, not many people want to drag their fingers on the screen. I guess you could use a mouse to guide your eyes, but I'm on a laptop right now and my mouse pad is only so large. I can't really go easily left to right. If I had an external mouse, it might be easier. I guess I could use my pen. I don't mind like, I don't mind touching my screen, but this definitely doesn't work well if you're reading off of your phone, right? Which is a touch screen or anything else that is a touch screen. So let's address reading on the screen. We're going to take some sample reading material. Uh, from the browser, and I want to show you how we might read it faster. Let's take some sample material from The Onion. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with The Onion, but The Onion is, their tagline here, is America's finest news source. So we're going to read some material from here. And in this article, we have injured birthday clown taken behind bouncy house to be shot. So we're going to read this short article, as you can see here. And I want to show you a way that you could read it a bit faster using a free speed reading tool that we created here at Iris. And that tool is called Accelerator. If you go to accelerator.com, that's where you can find it. Now, what you do in this program, you just copy and paste the text. 
So this is just a very, very short article, as you can see. I've already copy and pasted it in here. We click begin. And then I want you to focus your attention in the middle of the screen here. When I click the read button, you're going to notice the words blinking on the screen at whatever speed you set in the program. Now, currently, I have it set to 200 words per minute. Now, I know that's like an average speed. It's not going to be that fast. Let's try it out at average, and then we could always bump it up later on. But let's see what that looks like. Focus your attention in the middle here. I'm going to disable my webcam. And we're, we're just going to read this very, very short article here. Injured birthday clown taken behind bouncy house to be shot. Let's try it out. Here we go. Okay, so you get the idea. I think you see the words were blinking on the screen. You probably noticed it was also blinking multiple words at a time. That is something you could change in the settings here. So if I click on settings, let me show you what I mean here. Let me zoom in so you can see some of the main settings here. So first off, uh, words per minute. We can change that to whatever we want. Uh, chunk size, we had that set to three words at a time. And I set that ahead of time to three just to prove the point that you're perfectly capable of reading groups of words. Now, I also want to mention one other thing. We had the words blinking on the screen, and because we're doing this as a live stream, there's a refresh rate, and it's all dependent on my bandwidth, your bandwidth. So when we're blinking the words on the screen, on my screen, it's blinking at a very constant pace, but on your screen, it might have a few, it might blink, pause, and then blink kind of fast, and I want you to be aware that's only because we're doing a live stream. When you do this on your own, it will blink at whatever speed you have at a consistent pace. Also, that's why if I start bumping up the speed to something even faster, it's it's gonna be a little hard to see it on a live stream. So I don't know, I could change the article and change the speed to like 300 or 400 words per minute. It's gonna blink faster, but on a live stream, that's not gonna be the best of demonstrations here. I'll just show you so you get an idea. I'm gonna highlight this text right here. Here we have another article from The Onion, NASA lights astronauts on fire in order to simulate life on Venus. So we do the same thing, paste it into the program here. And if I bump up the speed, and you could use keyboard shortcuts to do that, I can bump it up by hitting the up or down arrow keys to increase or decrease by 25. So if I did that and I press up a few times, you see we're at 300. Here's the thing, if I do this now, you're gonna notice that because we're doing a live stream, it might not blink at a consistent pace. Let's just check it out right now. Okay, and I was checking on a separate computer to see how that would, on my computer on the side here, the live stream was blinking consistently, but your your results may vary. Uh, but again, check this out when you have a chance. There's a bunch of other settings you can play around with. Uh, I wanna jump back to the slides in the meantime because we've got a lot more still to cover, but that is Accelerator. We're working on making more updates to it, making it an app, a browser plugin, but if you go to accelerator.com, that's where you can find updates. Now, how do you get better at anything? I think we all know the answer to this. The answer is practice. Now, when we're talking about practice, there's a way that we can practice to improve our reading speed. 
And there are these drills you can do, they're called speed drills. And the whole point of a speed drill is to purposely, as you see on the screen here, purposely go faster than you would normally read. So uh, how are we gonna do that? We're gonna take material you already read. Remember this article, Age of Distraction? You read that article for a minute, 60 seconds. And you got to a certain point, right? Maybe you got through the first couple paragraphs, maybe you got the, through the first three, or maybe you ended up somewhere over here. I want you to get to the point that you read up to in 40 seconds. Why? Because I want to train you to see words faster, okay? Even though it's material we already read, when we're doing a speed drill, the goal of the exercise is to kind of basically skim material we already read. But the real goal is to get used to seeing the words at a more rapid pace. So I'm gonna put 40 seconds on the clock here on my timer, and I'm gonna disable my webcam, so goodbye temporarily. Start at the top. If you happen to have this printed out, or if it's comfortable enough that you can use your hand, finger, or pen as a guide, feel free to do that. I understand some of you might not be able to do that because if you're reading off the screen or if you got a touch screen, you don't have to use your hand or pen, but if it's convenient for you to do so, I would recommend it. Regardless, you have to go faster. Everybody's got to go faster because I'm giving you 40 seconds to make it to the line that you originally read up to. All right, let's try it out. From the top, 40 seconds, get to the line you read up to, ready, set, and go. All right, that was 40 seconds. Did you make it to your line? Hopefully you did. Or maybe you made it past your line. If you get to your line before the time is up, just uh, go back into normal reading mode. What we're gonna do now is another drill, but I'm gonna give you a little bit less time. Instead of 40 seconds, I'm gonna give you 35 seconds. So start from the top. You gotta get to the point that you originally read up to. During that first minute of reading that we did, at the beginning of the session. You read for 60 seconds, I want you to skim or do a speed drill in 35 seconds. You gotta get to that same point or further. Okay, so let me put 35 seconds on the clock, start back at the beginning, ready, set, and go, a little faster. All right, 35 seconds is up. Hopefully you made it to your line. Let's do 30 seconds, a little bit faster. Now, obviously, if we're doing 30 seconds and getting through the minute of reading we did earlier, that means you gotta go at a speed that's about double your normal speed, right? So keep in mind, this is not, it doesn't mean we have doubled our reading speed. We're reading the same thing we read earlier, so it doesn't really count. What is happening here is we're just skimming at double our normal rate, but keep in mind the overall goal. Before you start reading faster with comprehension, we want to start by getting used to seeing the words faster. Even if comprehension is so-so, I know sometimes we're doing these drills and people are like, I'm not getting any of this. Or some people are like, okay, I'm getting comprehension, but it's basically the same comprehension I had from the first minute of reading I did. Sure, either one is fine. The goal here is actually we're kind of lowering the priority of comprehension and increasing the priority of speed only because right now I'm, I want to focus on helping you to see words faster. In a little bit we'll focus on comprehension but right now focus on speed. You got 30 seconds from the top to the line that you originally read up to. Okay got to go twice as fast. Ready? 30 seconds is on the clock. Ready, set, and go.
All right, 30 seconds is up. Now, we're going to make the drill a bit more challenging. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to get through not just the line that you read up to. I want you to get through the entire passage, all the way down to here. Now, I'm going to give you more time. I'm going to give you a very generous minute and uh, 30 seconds here. Now, it's not that generous, but I'm purposely giving you a short period of time. So I want you to skim all of this, even though there's material down here that I'm assuming you haven't read yet. That's okay. Skim it all. So that means you're going to be going fast here through the material you already read. When you get past the material you already read, you're going to keep going at that same speed, even though your comprehension is going to drop like a rock. Just warning you. That's okay. It's okay when we're doing a speed drill. It's not okay when we're reading, because when we're reading, we want as much comprehension as possible. But when we're doing a drill, this is just a training exercise. It's just practice. So skim all of this text, okay? You got a minute and 30 seconds. Let me, by the way, I'll give you a heads up. When we get halfway through the time at the 45 second point, which is halfway, I'll just jump on the mic and say halfway. That way you know you should be about halfway through this text. And if not, speed up regardless of comprehension your main goal is i gotta make it to this line before time's up if you make it to the line before time is up just start back at the beginning and keep going the more practice we do the better so let's try it out i'm putting a minute and 30 seconds on the clock from the top to the bottom just skim it all ready set and go Halfway. All right, very good. If you made it there, awesome. Now we're do, we're gonna do one last drill. This is a minute 15, same exact thing. I know some of you, if you didn't get to the end of the line here, end of the passage, here's what probably happened during that minute and 30 seconds. You started off going fast, right? Cause you're like, this is weak sauce. I already read all this. You're going fast through all that material. And then you get to the new material down here and you're like, you know what? This article is kind of interesting. Let me Let me slow it down a little bit. And maybe that's why you <laughs> fell behind. I want you to speed through all of it. So you can always read this later, as many times as you want. But right now, I want you to focus on speed one last time. In a little bit, we'll get into comprehension. But right now, I want you to just skim all of this text. You got a minute and 15 seconds to get to the end of the passage. So let me put that on the clock here. This is our final speed drill. So make sure you're going faster than last time. From the top to the very end. Ready, set, and go.
All right, that was a minute and 15 seconds. If you made it through it, very, very good. Now, we're gonna switch back to normal reading. What I mean by this is we're not doing a speed drill anymore. I want you to go at your normal reading speed. So we're gonna take new material. The article looks like this, How Distraction Hurts Creativity. You can find that article through the link you see on the screen here, irisreading.com slash YTS. Now, make sure you have that pulled up on your screen, or if your screen is large enough to just read from here, you can just read from here. But the title of the file is speedtest2.pdf. So when I say we're gonna go back to normal reading, when we're doing the speed drill, the whole point was to go faster than you would normally read. But now I want you to go at a normal reading speed. That means not too fast and not too slow. So read for good comprehension. I'm gonna give you a minute of reading and then I will stop you. So like I said, not too fast, not too slow. So from the top, and you can continue, if you've been using your hand, finger, or pen as a guide, you can continue doing that. Okay, ready, set, and go. All right, that was a minute. Take a look at the line where you stopped and take note of what your speed was. So you read for a minute. And it's not uncommon for people to make an improvement after just a handful of drills and exercises like what we just did. And I'm actually curious to know if you made an improvement. And if you did, great, that's what the success baby is here for. And if you didn't make an improvement, don't worry. There's more things we can do to improve speed and comprehension. But if you made an improvement, and a lot of people do at this point, great. Now, I want you to enter that in the same exact form as before. If you go to irisreading.com slash YTS, you can see that link in the chat area, or you can just type it in your browser, or you can scan this QR code. It'll take you to the same form, and you can enter what your speed and you can estimate your comprehension there as well. Again, we said comprehension, it's not it's like a subjective estimate of comprehension. I'm not gonna give you a reading test based on a single minute of reading, but if you had, felt like your comprehension was pretty good, you might say 90% or 80%, felt like it was so-so, put a 70 there or a 50 if it was bad. So put a number there, we appreciate the feedback. I want you to be aware of how these drills work because you can practice them on your own to get faster. I like to think of it like being on the highway. When you're on the highway, you're going faster than usual, assuming there's no traffic. You're going faster than usual. And how does it feel when you get off the highway? Doesn't it feel kind of slow? Now, why does it feel so slow? It feels slow because you got used to going maybe 70 or 80 miles an hour on the highway. So when you get off the highway and now you're going 40 or 50, it feels very slow because you got used to that faster speed. Think about your reading speed the same way. When we're doing the speed drills, we are purposely going a lot faster, like being on the highway. You might be going, if you're an average reader and you're going 200 words a minute, you might be going around 400 words a minute during the drills. So that if you get used to that higher rate, when you drop it down to something like uh, you know 250, which is faster than usual for you, it's not gonna feel as fast if you got used to practicing at those higher rates. So that's how these speed drills tend to work. But let's talk about comprehension because we haven't addressed this yet. And there's a simple way you can get better comprehension, and that is by changing up your reading speed, slowing down at key points and speeding up at others. Just like if we could take this driving analogy, you don't always drive the same speed. If you're making a turn like this, you are definitely going to slow it down. What, what about when we're reading? So let's say you're reading this article, and this is not one of our handouts, but just for display purposes. If you're reading a short article like this, or even a longer chapter, when should I slow it down? 
a good rule of thumb is to slow down on the first sentence of each paragraph. And you probably already know why. The first sentence is almost always the main idea. Not always, but usually. Probably 80, 90% of the time in well-written material. So we slow down on the first sentence and then speed up. Slow down here, speed up here. Slow down, speed up. And you can get into the nice reading rhythm. Let me zoom in on this paragraph so you can see what I'm talking about. The title of this article is India's Skills Famine. So first paragraph, you see the paragraph, first sentence reads, the economic transformation of India is one of the great business stories of our time. Sound like a main idea? Very straightforward. I'm taking that and now I'm trying to run with it. I'm going to go a little faster through the paragraph. When I get to the new paragraph, I'm going to apply the brakes, slow it down here. And we see the first sentence reads, but India has run into a surprising hitch on its way to superpower status. Its inexhaustible supply of workers is becoming exhausted. Okay, another main idea. Let me speed up now. Let me get my details. Next paragraph. How is this possible in a country that every year produces two and a half million college graduates and 400,000 engineers? Interesting. Now we speed up. So this idea of slowing down and speeding up, when I say slow down, I don't mean extremely slow. And when I say speed up, we don't mean ridiculously fast. Just a little slower, a little faster. Again, kind of like when you're driving. When you're approaching a red light, you kind of slow it down. When it's green, you gradually speed up. Look at this paragraph. There was a time when many economists believed that post-secondary education didn't have much impact on economic growth. Interesting, now I'm getting my details. Next paragraph, the irony of the current situation is that India was once considered to be overeducated. That's so weird, How? that's a weird statement, right? Like how could a country be overeducated Economists, this, this is not a bad thing, right? This is a good thing. Now we're going to get our details, right? In the 70s, blah, 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 blah. We'll pick up our details. When we get to a new paragraph, we'll slow it down again. Since the Second World War, the countries that have made successful leaps from developing to develop status have all poured money, public and private, into education. Interesting. Now I get my details. Last paragraph India has taken tentative steps to remedy its skills famine. The current government has made noises about doubling spending on education, and a host of new colleges and universities have sprung up since the mid-1990s. Interesting. And then we wrap up and get all our details. Now, I'm bringing this up because changing your speed forces you to pay attention. When the speed changes, that creates more focus, just like when you're driving. If you're driving through the cornfields in a rural area, right, and you're just going 70 miles an hour for a long period of time, sure, you are focused on the road. But don't you focus more when you're driving in an urban environment where you're constantly slowing down, speeding up, stopping, making turns. That constant change of speed forces you to focus more. So you pay more attention if you change up your speed. Doesn't that also happen when people talk? You ever have a teacher or a professor in the past that spoke in a monotone voice like this? Imagine you came to this webinar and I'm like, hello, my name is Paul Novak and today we're gonna be covering speed reading and we're gonna cut. Uh, it's hard to pay attention when people speak that way. So again, remember, changing your speed forces you to pay attention. So you want to get into that habit. Now, one other thing I want to mention here is something very obvious. I read the first sentence of each paragraph out loud to you. And I did that on purpose to demonstrate the point that we're leading to. And this is a very important strategy that you should always keep in mind if you want to be reading faster or with comprehension. And that is the idea that before you read anything, you should always, always inspect what you read. When I say inspect, I mean get familiar with something before you read it. How you do this depends on the material. If it's a one-page article like this, I'm going to read the first sentence of each paragraph first, get my main ideas, and then I'm going to read the article. What's going to happen to your reading speed if you get all your main ideas first? Like if I asked you to read this article right now, you no doubt would read this faster than you otherwise would have. Right? If you read an article cold, just beginning to end, and you don't know where you're going, you don't know what to expect, of course you have to go slower. But what if you know what's they're talking about India, a shortage of skilled labor, the economy, education. All right, let me get my details now. Let me pick up my scraps. That is a much more efficient way to read. I understand maybe you don't want to do this when you're reading like fiction, sure, but when we're reading detailed technical information or nonfiction, it's a good idea. What about when you're reading something more complex, like a, I don't know, a textbook chapter? You, or it might be a journal article uh, or a report, whatever it is, 
The way you inspect the material is by reading the introduction first and then the headings and subheadings. You're flipping through that chapter. You're looking at words that are in bold or italics. You're going to be looking at charts, tables, diagrams, pictures, but don't dive into the details. When you're inspecting, just look at the titles of those charts, tables, or diagrams. When you get to the end, read the conclusion. Maybe you have questions you got to do for homework. Read the questions. But this is what you would do before you read the whole chapter. Here's an example of a finance textbook, Goals and Governance of the Firm. I drew a big red box around what I would consider the introduction. It's very obvious here on the first page. It's just a few paragraphs, right? Or the introduction might actually say introduction or objectives, executive summary, abstract, all we know all these terms, right? So we read that intro. Then what? All right, next page. You see all those red arrows? That's where my eyes are going. I'm reading the headings, the boldface words, the subheadings. Next page. Nothing really here pops off the page except this table. I'm not going to dive into the details here. I'm just going to read the title of that table right there. Next page. Subheading. Boldface words. And I keep doing that page by page till I get to the end. Then I read my conclusion, maybe the questions as well. And then I'm going to go back to the very beginning. And let me read this chapter now. Let's get into the nitty gritty details. I already read all this, so I'll start here. And now I'm going to read for detail. Now, of course, you could take notes and things like By the way, there are ways of taking notes, different note taking methods that are outside of the traditional highlighting or jotting things down on a sheet of paper or digitally. Uh, if you want information on that, go to our website. We have a great note taking course um, that I think you'll find very helpful. Now, it's all about inspecting first. And this leads us to what we would call the IRIS method. IRIS, the name of our organization, it's named after an approach you would take if you want to read something very well in a comprehensive way. It starts with inspecting the material, getting familiar with it. You could think of this like, a, you know, before you work out or play a sport, what do you do? You, you stretch and you warm up. So this is like the reading equivalent of stretching and warming up. Now that we're familiar with the chapter, we've warmed up, let's read it. And when you're done reading, you inquire. When I say inquire, I mean ask questions. Questions help focus the mind. Questions could be based on your purpose. Like when I'm done reading a chapter, if I was a student, I'd be asking questions like, uh, okay, what are the things I got to remember for the test? Or what are the biggest takeaways from this chapter? Or if I was writing a paper based on what I read, I'd be thinking, okay, what from this chapter should I be including in my paper or to talk about? But your question could also be, what do I need to memorize? Because sometimes you got to memorize details. You might read and understand the chapter well, but now you got to memorize some very detailed information. That leads us to the uh, storage step at the end. So again, this is just an acronym for IRIS, to inspect, read, inquire, store. We don't have time to cover memory techniques in this particular webinar. Uh, you can go to our website to check out some more comprehensive courses on how to memorize, uh, but there are various methods. That's what you do at the end. We wanna start by understanding the material first. Memorizing can come later. Or you could do a speed drill at this point. Let me explain how you might do that. If you want to practice these drills on your own, your goal when you're doing speed drills is basically to see words at double your normal speed, twice as fast. And why? Because if you're an average reader at 200, your practice speed should be closer to 400. So you can get to something like 250. When I say get to 250, I mean reading at 250 words a minute with comprehension. Now, if you're reading already at that speed, you practice at double that speed, so you can get to 300. Remember that highway example I said? If you get used to going, uh, I don't know, 70 miles an hour or 700 words a minute, eventually 400, I was going to say miles per hour, 40 miles per hour or 400 words per minute, it's not going to feel as fast if you get used to practicing up here. So that's how we could build up our speed. And you could do this in the process. When you start reading, just time yourself. Maybe you read for 20 minutes. Okay ask questions about what you just read, and then do a speed drill that is half the time, 10 minutes. That's basically going back to the beginning of the chapter, and I'm skimming everything that I just read in half the time. Now, you might have read something that's shorter. Maybe it's 12 minutes of reading. Okay, my drill is going to be six. Or maybe you read for four minutes. Maybe this is a short article. Okay, two-minute drill. But you can do those drills also on Accelerator. Or if you take one of our advanced courses on the website, we do a lot of drills in those courses. So um, you could use the drills through the accelerator program. Let's say you're comfortable at 250 words a minute. You read your article, okay, double that up. Now you're going 500 words a minute through something you already read, but it's just for training purposes. Actually, it helps your retention too, because you're basically 
skimming through what you already read. So it's getting another exposure to the information. Now, like I said, if you're interested in storing and learning how to memorize, uh, go to the website, irisreading.com. That's where you can find courses on that. And also, uh, here's a nice little bonus for you guys for sticking around to the end. The articles that we read earlier are extracted from this great book, Focus, Simplicity Manifesto in the Age of Distraction uh, by Leo Babauta. He's given us permission to freely distribute this book. It's a quick read. It's about 100 pages and a great read if you're looking to improve your ability to focus. So if you want me to email you that PDF of the book, just shoot me an email at this uh, paul at irisreading.com. Let me know that you were in, that you watched this video. Uh, otherwise, I get a ton of emails of people trying to sell me this and that. And uh, just let me know so that way I can see, find, see that email and then respond to you with the PDF. Uh, but if you're interested in advanced courses that we have on our website, just go to irisreading.com slash courses. I'll put that link in the chat here irisreading.com slash courses. And basically, we have a number of courses there on speed reading techniques, additional ones if you want to dive deeper into this topic beyond just this webinar. Uh, we also have comprehension strategies, maximizing memory, note-taking, personal productivity. If you are interested, uh, use this code that we're just putting for this particular uh, live stream. Just my name, Paul. If you enter that code, it will give you 30% off any of our advanced courses, uh, and we'll keep that going for a little bit of time before we pull that code. Uh, but definitely take advantage of that if you're interested in diving deeper into any of these study skills. Uh, also, just a reminder, subscribe here on YouTube, or as they say, smash or smush that like button and so on and so forth. I don't want to be cliche with this because I hear it all the time in YouTube videos. But Please subscribe if you're interested in more content that we'll be posting here. And I want to thank you all for attending. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, my email is paul at irisreading. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Just let me know that you attended uh, one of these sessions, and I'm happy to connect uh, or put you in touch with maybe people that I have in my network. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you see it right there, Paul G. Nowak, or it's pronounced Novak, but it's spelled like Nowak. But you can follow me there. Thank you all so much for attending. I hope you found this particular session helpful. And if you're interested in other courses, again, just check out the website, irisreading.com. That's where you can find all the courses. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Also, if you like what we're doing here at Iris Reading, please tell your friends about us. And if you don't like what we're doing, tell your enemies about us, because that's going to show them, right? Thank you so much for attending. Have a great rest of the day. Take care.